Xi Jinping, if you can hear me, please save me. Xi Jinping, if you can hear me, please save me. Xi Jinping, if you can hear me, please save us. The children crave high-speed rail and free health care. Xi Jinping, if you can hear me, please save us. Please save me. The global drug pipeline isn't shifting. It's been seized. And if you still think the next cancer cure is coming from Boston or Basel, you're not just behind. You're operating on propaganda. Drugs like Ozempic have taken the world by storm. In China, biotech companies are developing dozens of similar drugs that can potentially challenge such medical advances in the US and EU. And these aren't just knockoffs. A new exclusive Bloomberg News analysis shows the country is playing a bigger role in coming up with innovative medicines to treat serious diseases like cancer and cardiovascular conditions. Look at China's growing share of the global drug research. Chinese drug makers are now studying way more new drug candidates than the EU and almost catching up to the US. Let's kill the myth right now. China is no longer a generic drug factory. It's no longer catching up. It's not even rising. It's winning. From 2019 to 2023, China led the world with 256 new drug approvals, ahead of the US with 243, and the EU, 191. Not even close. China is ahead. And last year, over 1,250 novel drugs entered development in China, more than the entire European Union, and nearly level with the US. This is industrial scale disruption. And the West still congratulating itself on patent extensions and stock buybacks. When it comes to quality, more Chinese drugs are proving high quality enough to get fast-tracked by major Western regulators. In a study last year, a Chinese drug beat the world's best-selling cancer drug that was developed by a U.S. company. The West is no longer the unrivaled center for medical innovation. And this new dynamic could be yet another forefront for the U.S.-China tech rivalry. Big pharma companies are spending substantial money to buy up these Chinese medical innovations with the goal of bringing them to US and European markets. In fact, a handful are already available. So don't be too surprised if you get prescribed a drug that finds its roots all the way in China. How did China build this machine? This didn't happen by accident. It happened by design. While Western pharma CEOs testified before Congress about drug prices, China reformed its FDA equivalent the NMPA, to fast-track novel therapies. They slashed approval times from years to months. They incentivized first-in-class drugs with tax breaks, grants, and state-backed venture funds. And they did something even more dangerous. They educated their way to dominance. China produces 10 times more STEM graduates annually than the U.S. That's an army of scientists, PhDs in biochemistry, AI-driven drug discovery, genomics, flood-in labs in Shanghai, Suzhou, and Shenzhen. You don't beat that with press releases. You beat it with policy, investment, and vision. Three things the West hasn't had in a very long time. It appears there's a China biotech gold rush as U.S. investors and pharma giants they look to the world's second largest economy and a new quest for new drugs and new remedies. Our Angelica Peebles has taken a closer look. Angelica, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Frank. Everyone is talking about China right now, and almost 30% of big pharma deals with at least $50 million up front came from China last year. That's up from 20% the year before and zero in 2019. In the span of just a few days in December, Merck announced two licensing deals with Chinese companies, and that really got people's attention. So what's going on? Investors and industry insiders tell me that Chinese companies are creating better molecules than ever before, and a whole lot more of them. Plus, in China, you can test those compounds in humans fast faster and at a lower price than you can in the U.S. Buyers have also figured out the business model. They essentially import the drugs they want through licensing deals versus acquiring companies outright, which is a little bit harder. And investment in China has also dried up, so more companies there have to do deals. Now, the big debate is what this all means for the U.S. biopharma industry. Different people give you different answers. Some people say this is actually a good thing, because if you could develop the drugs faster and at a lower cost, you could ultimately lower drug prices here in the U.S., and obviously there's appetite for that. But other people see this as a huge threat to the U.S. biotech industry because if the mercs of the world can find better, less expensive drugs in China, they might not need to buy the American startups that are banking on being acquired. So this is a big trend that we're keeping an eye on, Frank. Let's go deeper. In 2023, 29% of all new clinical trials globally involve China. Europe, just 16%. 
foreign drug applications in China jumped from 13 in 2016 to 193 in 2022. Every major firm, Pfizer, Merck, Novartis, is now running trials here. Not because they want to, because they have to. And now, the flow of money has reversed. In 2024, 31% of all big pharma licensing deals included a Chinese biotech partner. That means Western companies aren't exporting drugs to China. They're importing Chinese innovation and paying top dollar for it. Even the patent office tells the story. Pharma and medtech patents in China have surged 379% in just 10 years. Today, China accounts for 25% of all new global drug development, up from 2% a decade ago. The pipeline didn't shift. It was reversed. Yeah, some interesting dynamics here. So uh, during the Biden administration, they actually put export controls on biotech equipment to China. Um, when we're looking at biotech, how does that compare to how at least uh, this administration is expected to view tech? Do we have any concerns that Washington might intervene, inter intervene and kind of interrupt some of what we're seeing here? Well, that's one thing that everyone I talk to has their eye on, right? This question, they um, people compare this to almost the deep seek moment that we saw in AI, where you saw a company in China saying that it could do something just as good for a fraction of the price. And obviously, you've seen the reaction. You saw what happened to the stocks that day and all this talk about um, in Washington about having these protectionist policies in terms of tech. And so there is a question, you know, this concern that maybe we might see that here if you do continue to see more of these deals. At this point, I haven't heard anything, but it's something that everyone is watching very closely. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, private biotech funding in China dipped to $4.2 billion in 2024, down from previous highs. Some Western analysts are calling it a crash, a bubble burst. Wrong. This isn't a collapse, it's a correction. The state-backed foundation, we're talking about labs, talent, infrastructure, regulatory support, remains untouched. Local governments are still funding biotech parks. Hospitals are still running trials. Scientists are still publishing. One year of cooler private markets doesn't erase a decade of systemic buildup. If anything, it means the speculative noise is fading and the real players are staying. Compare that to the U.S., where FDA delays, pricing battles, um, and political grandstanding are making drug development a bureaucratic nightmare. China's system might not be perfect, but it's focused, while the Western system is distracted. Pharmaceutical giant Merck has put an end to the debate as to when they were going to enter the GLP-1 race. They've paid a whopping $112 million upfront to Hanso for the exclusive global rights to develop HS10535, which is a small molecule GLP-1. What I found interesting is that Hanso already has a dual GLP-1 GIP injectable in phase two trials for diabetes and obesity, but it appears Merck overlooked this to go the oral route, which got me thinking, if you could have a weekly injectable that got you say 25% average weight loss or a daily oral with a similar side effect profile that could get you, let's say 21%, which would you choose and why? Let me know in the comments. So how did the West lose? Not because China cheated, because the West stopped innovating. Big Pharma didn't double down on R&D, it doubled down on shareholder returns. From 2015 to 2024, the top 10 US drug makers spent $1.1 trillion on stock buybacks, more than their entire R&B budgets combined. Meanwhile, China invested billions in biotech clusters, state-backed, locally run, globally competitive. And when the West did notice, what was the response? Oh, it's just generics. They copy everything. They'll never do first in class. Well, guess what? They are. The oncology gene therapy and mRNA delivery, Chinese firms are now leading trials in areas where Western companies haven't even filed INDs. Another $2 billion deal to buy new drug from a Chinese biotech company. We will see that more and more. One of the reasons is because AI technology a new technology is a great equalizer. A lot of Chinese startups, they were not even in the game. Bio. China, Chinese is behind in bio. No question about that. But with AI, they just accelerate to a speed at least equal to the peers. They develop a lot of new drugs. Drugs cure people the same way. They cure Chinese 
the same way as they kill Cuba, America, not Cuba. Okay. Anyway, it's good for everybody. We develop drug, not for one kind of people, for all the people. That is what technology for AI is for all the people, not for any people. That being said, why would United States trying to sanction China so that China don't get the latest chips so that the AI technology can be fully used? Why? We all want to be on the good side. We all want to be on the right side. And we always think we are on the right side already. But sometimes the right side is only one side. Here, the side that try to hinder the development of technology to produce beneficial results for the whole humanity is the wrong side. Who's on the wrong side? Be objective. The next generation of cancer therapies likely developed in Guangzhou. The future of CRISPR delivery being optimized in Chengdu. Global drug pricing increasingly benchmarked against Chinese cost structures, not U.S. profit margins. And here's the kicker. When a Chinese biotech discovers a breakthrough, who gets access first? Not Americans, not Europeans. Chinese patients do. National interest guides distribution, and China's interest is clear. Keep the innovation, keep the IP, keep the advantage. The West's dream of open science is being outmaneuvered by a state that treats biotech like national infrastructure. Because it is. Can the West catch up? Maybe. But not by doing more of the same. Not with another tax break for pharma. Not with another congressional hearing. Not with virtue signal about ethical uh, innovation while blocking AI-driven trials. To compete, the West would need a national industrial strategy for biotech, which they don't have one. A radical overhaul of FDA processes which they're moving backwards, and a real investment in STEM talent. But they're deporting foreign grads and underfunding research. Until that changes, the answer is clear. No. So the next time you hear about a miracle drug or a groundbreaking trial, ask yourself, where was it discovered? Who funded it? Who owns the patent? Because the era of Western pharmaceutical dominance is over. It didn't end with a bang. It ended with complacency, greed, and denial. Hit like, subscribe, and drop a comment. Can the West ever win back biotech? Until next time, bye.